Okay. Okay. My question is this. I I believe sometimes, you know, I have encountered angels and I also have encountered the Lord. <clears throat> sometimes I believe I have an encounter like the Lord manifests through the angel. Sometimes I have an, an angel encounter and I could feel a very strong a presence of the Lord through that angel, like the Lord manifests through that angel. Have you ever experienced that? That is my question. Am I feeling maybe this angel uh, uh, releasing a greater anointing or greater present atmosphere, or it is really the Lord? Because it's like, there's a difference. It's like, I know this is an angel, but I'm feeling so much this encounter is with the Lord, like this is, the presence of the Lord that manifests through the angel. Maybe sometime I think he visits us through an angel, he manifests himself through that angel and then and come to us. If that makes sense. One thing that does uh, click with me on that search is that a lot of the angels are angels that manifest the nature of Yahweh. Like for example, angels of grace, angels of glory, angels of peace. So they carry the atmospheres of the nature of Yahweh. So some angels, uh, they obviously they all are pure and whatever, but they carry different purposes out. Like one might be carrying out, um, you know, a, a territorial governmental function, but then there's those that carry the atmosphere, atmosphere of holiness, holy angel, angels of holiness, angels of fire, angels of, of, of grace, angels of glory. And that might be, what you're saying that you're saying yeah yeah sometime like i have an encounter like i know this is an angel this is not the lord but you can tell me this is not the lord and what i'm feeling you know the mm. the, the looking is angel the scene mm. but the feeling of the atmosphere the presence is the lord very strongly like the presence of the lord good that angel mm. people don't realize that when you encounter and engage with the angelic realm, you have got some diversity of angelic beings. <clears throat> like when you, when you actually see the fullness of the throne of God with the fiery and seraphim um, in his presence, they are radiating that holiness of God and that glory that they actually experienced that they're not physically saying holy, 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 as described in the, in the Bible. They are radiating that reality of adoration of God, which actually um, emits and permeates the very atmosphere with that holy holiness and the beauty and glory of God. That's true, Dimitri. Yes. Yeah. That's good. And that's why you can know also um, are experienced when angels uh, suddenly appear like in the room and you recognize an atmosphere change. You're like, oh, and it's actually a group of angels that have just appeared. And <clears throat> Yeah, like my atmosphere is changing now already. I'm done. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think about worship angels, and then like um the other time when um I wanted to worship, and then um and I wasn't like you know <coughs> that much into the flow, but then like I asked for like an angel worship to help me worship, and then it 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 felt like much better, <sighs> and then also um I'm not sure if, if this is um angelic or holy spirit or yeshua but um like sometimes uh when i speak out loud like you know like oh um and i ask like oh where is you know where is a certain thing even in, in the house or something and then i get led to it uh by intuition by angels or by holy spirit or you know by a father god whoever that is on my team <laughs> in the supernatural realm i just get led to it and then um also there's certain teachings that uh, I get led to, and also, um, there's also, um, I mean, uh, unfortunately, I've quenched uh, the, 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 probably the Holy Spirit before, so um, that, that, that led to regrettable um, uh, 
events happening that I repented for. But there was also like, um, uh, yeah, so there were like connections, like um, unexpected money coming. And also um, there was one other thing I wanted to say. Oh yeah, like almost near death experiences. Like, um, like when I was crossing the road and then like, I didn't even notice the car come and then it would just be like almost like borderline and then something would just pull me back and I wasn't even aware that the car was, was there or something like that. So I guess all these experiences, I, I just want to give glory to the Lord and thank any, um, whether it's the, it's the work of the Holy Trinity or, or the angels that's on my team. Yeah, I just give them... Um, Glory. Thanks. Yeah, give them thanks. <laughs> we, we don't realize that the, our angels are working with us and around us 24 7. Um, and I know if I look back at some of the stuff that I've encountered, things that have happened where, in all reality, according to natural things, I should not be alive and here still today. I, uh, just something that's coming to my mind when we were in the, the operational area of the, during the Angolan War, one of our lieutenants actually took a um, rocket propelled grenade into his, the center of his chest and the thing didn't explode. If it had, all of us would be, have been gone. And the doctors, when they actually had to remove it before um, putting him in the ambulance, had to have a bomb disposal guide disconnected. And I think that was, it was in the time it actually turned my back on God. There was one of the times I said, Father, yeah, just give your angels authority now. Do not let that detonator go off. I see, I do see angels all the time. Um, I think uh, I, I kind of lose interest maybe because it's, uh, it's hard for me. I can see them well. It's uh, speaking to them and listening to what they say, you know, that that's harder for me. So I kind of get a little frustrated and I just say, you know, I know you're there and uh, I love you and things like that. Just very short. But uh, so that's my experience with angels. And I'm grateful. I have this side. Very grateful. So something that might help you there, which I've come across over a, few, over a number of years, is that sometimes you don't actually have physical communication as in word to word speaking to them but you will sometimes have just mind to mind interaction and passing of thoughts one to the other other times you almost just sense things that are being coming to you from the angel and as you release back to the angels they actually pick up on that same frequency and that's quite often how you communicate with them and not on the actual, like we try to understand it, like speaking to them. Um, it's like many times when I engage Father, I just, I, he doesn't say a word, I don't say a word, but there's this absolute flow of communication. Yeah, and I have to say that, uh, you know, um, when I think that Holy Spirit is speaking to me, it may be an angel, you know, because I feel like I hear Holy Spirit's voice constantly, you know, all day long. So it, it may very well be an angel. <laughs> uh, uh, there is often times where... The angels are coming and we actually interpret it as Holy Spirit, but it's often angels. Yeah. If you look at the fire, um, the fire 
falling on them when the Holy Spirit came upon them on the day of Pentecost. That was, there were angels present releasing and manifesting the presence. Yeah, I could see that coming as fire too. Yeah. Like if you look at the, when um, Elijah was taken up, he was taken up in a whirlwind. And I've actually seen a meeting in Nigeria, a whirlwind coming through between the people. And it was an angel. It was an actual angelic yeah. being in the form of a whirlwind. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I experienced this maybe four or five times. Like around time like this. I'm just on my room, meditate on the Lord, awake like I am now. And uh, a chariot of fire just come in the room like the Lord visit me. He just come and turn around and spend, take his time, spend like two, three minutes and look at me and he spent the whole entire chariot with fire. The whole thing, the horse, the chariot is just a ship of fire, full form, everything, everything is just fire, turn around and then gone and went up, went up, went up and disappeared. I experienced that a couple of times. You know, a wheel chariot with horse on it, hand on it, and he looked at me like he just, I mean, I know it's the Lord who's come and visit me and I know in my spirit, I know the chariot of fire who visit Elijah, but I know they wouldn't come to pick me up. It was just like a visit to travel and it and come and see me like that. And then spin around and gone, yeah. But at that time, of course, I was meditating on the word and the scripture. Yeah, it's so much happened that we yet to explain. The Lord haven't given us explanation. Many of us, so many encounters we have, I believe the Lord will explain to us later. Uh, what does that mean and uh, whatever the case may be. This is what I love about the whole dimensions of engaging the heavenly realms. The more you engage and the more time you spend there, the more you realize you haven't seen the, even you only scratching the, the tip of the iceberg. Um, there's so much more to see. Um, I get blown away every time I engage the angelic realm because I've come to realize there are so many dimensions and levels in just in the angelic realm that we don't really realize until we start to engage them specifically. I, I went into a shocking, let me tell you what I was shocked about, okay? The Lord deal with me for like, six years and I'm seeing angel encounter with the Lord before I visit the church, before I go out on the church, I was just having so much encounter with the Lord, with the supernatural. It was unbelievable. By the time I'm putting my foot on the church, like I know now, you know, I got to go to the church and I expect these people to know all these things and, and no, they don't know nothing. And I'm like, the Lord just begin to deal with me and I'm, I encounter all these things and I go to the church. I expect to ask questions. I expect to fellowship on that level and dry speaking and preaching and all stuff and nobody know nothing. The bishop don't know anything. The pastor will talk about that later. They don't know nothing. So my supernatural running to a brick wall. It's like I hit a dead end. No help to grow. No question. No fellowship. No Bible study to continue elevates life. I'm like, what is this? Jill, something just came to me, Jill, something just came to me which let me think quite often it can be the an, an angel speaking to us and not the Holy Spirit because when I used to pray for people in healing lines and stuff when I was still ministering very much in the sort of flow of the churches and stuff, I always used to sort of thank the Holy Spirit for moving through me, anointing my when I was in Kentucky, um, in they actually took several photos where 
where I was praying for people, you saw the end. angels next to me or behind me or um, and the light that they were releasing, you actually saw it on the photos. And that's when yeah. I realized many times when we it's angels like Raphael and the whole team that work with him releasing that healing unto that person. Yes. Yep. Yeah, that, that uh, I'll pay more, you know, more attention to it um, in trying to decipher, distinguish whose voice it is. And now the angels hear me asking for help with that. So I thank you for that. <laughs> we were well, I was just going to say something about that. I think um, it, it is just something to maybe as a question as well, I suppose, for us. Um, <clears throat> recognizing the different function of the angels they're not not all the angels want to speak to us, if I can put it that way, in terms of like, you know, tell us something or they they just want to release the fire or their fire angels. They so they their function, like some angels, obviously messenger angels are angels that want to bring messages to us, that want to communicate with us in that way, right? Whereas I think other angels have different functions and so they don't want to communicate like they we, they they want us to they want to release it and like say for example the fire they want to release the fire to us right so they bring something to release they want to create an atmosphere they want to play with us they want to to so the different angels have what we're understanding is that we get to understand their function so that we can Relate some angels, we would want to ask them, for example, we would recognize, for example, that, oh, this angel is with me because I'm engaging over governmental something. And this angel is a governmental angel. So I'm recognizing the angel's function there. And, and possibly through that, there would be a sense of communicating in the sense of, um, sensing something or whatever but I'm, I'm just saying when you talked about you didn't know if it was holy spirit speaking or if it was an angel speaking i i'm thinking right now that understanding the function is going to help us see that the angels really want to be communicators with us in terms of messaging us as it you know or not you see what i'm saying i do yeah that's good maybe looking at it <clears throat> excuse me from from that point of view can help as well yeah yeah that's good something i've also realized sometimes when i encounter angels the ones that seem to communicate with me more regularly on a um back and forth communication are those in are those that are of the order of the archangels and the order just below them which seem to be the ones that actually bring forth the message. And then those that are working with them are very often the ones that just release things. So now when I engage my, the, go to the scroll room to engage with my personal angel and the, my scroll to see what's next to be unfolded in my scroll, I've often encountered um, Gabriel joining him there and sharing things with me. Mm. Yeah, I think obviously we want to be able to discern or know the difference between hearing Father, hearing Jesus, hearing Holy Spirit, and hearing the seven spirits, you know, hearing wisdom, hearing. And so <laughs> I think it's like good to say, all right, well, I'm a multidimensional person and I can know all of that. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> yeah, I can discern a little bit. Yeah. This is part, to, you know, of being of the, the, um, the age of Zion, living in that reality. Yeah. One thing that I was picking up earlier was also, if you look at the bench of seven, the seven spirits before the throne of God operate with us on that bench of seven. Yeah, that, that's what he said on the book of Revelation, uh, chapter one, when the greeting from God the Father and from the seventh spirit of God. And then he went on to Jesus Christ too. So yes, uh, I mean, it, it's, it, it's really awesome. It's really awesome that uh -huh. we can communicate with the spirit. It, it also relies in our nature. We are spirit, indeed. And we're getting familiar with our own selves, with who we really are. And now, early, early song, um, part, you said we should actually release that and um, for our children and our grandchildren and stuff. I just feel now would be the, the right time if we can just all just come into the unity of oneness in the spirit and just visualize and release the functioning and understanding of the angelic realm to our families and our children and our grandchildren and that there would be an openness for people to discuss it, speak about it and not be afraid to share things um, that they might encounter or see or feel in the place, but just actually just releasing it. So if we can just all just come into that unity right now, just put our heads together for a moment. And let's just release that understanding of the dimensions of the angelic realm being open to us, through us, and for us, for our children and our grandchildren and our grandchildren's children in the generations to come. Father, we just thank you that we can first and foremost recognize that the angels are making um, spirits for the purpose of leading and guiding and showing us and bringing us to that place where you desire us in maturity. And right now we ask that you commission them in a fresh purpose and understanding and open our understandings to be able to communicate and release an understanding to our children and our grandchildren, and that they will be open to receiving, and that we actually ask the angelic beings to withhold anyone or anything that tries to um, cover their spiritual sight that they do not see or understand these things. I specifically right now just release it over my three grandchildren. And I thank you that nothing that their angelic beings that have been assigned to them will ensure that none of what he and nothing penetrates the through to their understanding other than that which is from God and the desire to see in the spirit. Anybody want to add personal part there? Please do. Yes. I just feel such a peace right now. There's just this absolute the atmosphere is changed. Mm. Mm -hmm. Shall we engage and see where we go? Um, it's not a hundred percent sure 
God having taken us into this whole angelic thing this evening, whether we are meant to go into the particle state, but I'm still seeing a lot of light as in the dimensions of different colors of light. So let's just engage for a while. Anything you receive, see, smell, taste, just release it and share it. might sound very weird, but I mean, I'm encountering the fragrance of holiness. It's just a, 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 a smell or fragrance that is just sensing, I sense it more than smell it. It's like clean, fresh, pure. It's like, um, almost like the smell of pure oxygen, but with a, with a, a hint of spiciness to it. When you said that, Dimitri, I just saw this very deep, dark blue light, almost like, almost black, but really deep, dark blue light. And it connected also with me to the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I was actually seeing like, like a, a sort of navy blue, blue, but with an intensity that goes much deeper. I was also seeing these colors i started seeing the colors orange and 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 like peachy and gold and i got the sense that this these are other angels that work together with the angels of holiness that you were seeing And uh, uh, when I was talking, when I was sort of like looking into why they were working together with holiness, what was coming to me was that because holiness isn't, as you said earlier, Dimitri, what we've thought it was, you know, it's not like, oh, you have to just be, you know, um, like we said, oh, holy, 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 but we never really knew what holy, holy was. And, and the atmosphere was... Uh, this there's something about the nature of these angels that work together with holiness that give us a correct understanding of holiness or correct insight to holiness it's not religious in other words i, I didn't come to an understanding of what they give or contribute yet As, as you were speaking, Michelle, when you started speaking, speaking about the dark blue, I saw Raphael, the angel of justice and fairness, radiating this absolute deep, deep, deep dark blue, like almost like a, um, I'm trying to think of the stone's name, the uh, Tanzanite blue. That Tanzanite blue, that deep dark blue, radiating light from Raquel mm. and I got the impression that the angel of fairness and justice operate together with the fear of the Lord 
And that brings us an understanding of what holiness is. It's that purity of heart. It's that essence of being fair, just, understanding the fear of the Lord and that wisdom will unfold from that. When you sh shared that, Dimitri, um, and I went back to the colors uh, that I saw of, uh, of the peachy orange and, uh, and gold, and now I, I heard, we are warmth and joy. So I was getting warmth and joy are a part of holiness. When you were speaking on those colors, what came to me was who God, whom God helps is part of holiness and the impartation of we have been made holy, mm. even as he is holy. God helps. It's that which we have not. It's part of the grace is holiness. Mm. Yeah. Can you please repeat that again, Jimmy, please? Yes. As Michelle was speaking of those colors, I got the words, whom God helps. And as I just pondered it for a moment, I saw that as being part of the grace package. And it's, we have been made holy through the completed work of Christ and the cross, and it's a grace impartation from Father to us, making us holy even as he is holy. And as, I, as I'm speaking, I'm seeing another dimension just opening up in front of me of the, as and that holiness itself is a warmth and a feeling of security and tenderness and a Oh, and adoration and love flows in that. It's that absolute love of like that that one your heart wants to burst from the love that you sense in feeling coming towards you and you want to just return it back unto Father as and that is the flow of holiness. Yeah, and I love what you said there, Dimitri. And it was like uh, holiness is is what we are. We are holy nation. It's not something that we. It's not something that we have to work at. To be holy, because we are holy nation. Yeah, uh, also, lately I begin to ponder. Remember, we comment to. To love, but then Jesus said to love one another as I have loved you. So how I'm gonna love someone how Jesus loved me without knowing, understanding how he loved me? We have to have a deeper depth, understanding how the Lord loved me. And I know in my spirit that love is not just suffer going to the cross and and now it's even deeper than that. It's greater, much more than that, you know? And for us to love one another as he have loved us, it's something we really have to begin to seek and get to know, you know, begin to, 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 to receive that so we can 
explore that, let that process flow and to have this kind of discussion, holiness and love, the love of God, which is totally different because I can love you with the love of God if I don't know it. It's, it's more than what I'm knowing it now. Also, as you were saying that, um, Serge, I was just seeing again that holy, the holiness that we are, the holy beings that we are. Um, I was seeing that we are, it's almost like what Demetrius, you said at the beginning when you saw this angel and we saw the depths of the color, that holiness is, is like a deep pool that you can look into and then when you look into it, it you get the wow and the more wow and the more wow of who you really are as a holy being. I'm seeing like a red color and I believe that's one of the uh, seven spirits. Is it not the, the red color? Is that righteous? The spirit of the Lord. That's awesome. Teaches and equips us in dominion. I didn't say this earlier, but when we started, I, I, I was seeing, uh, I saw a realm of possibility and I saw, I believe it was my husband as a very small child and he was taking him into a place and he was doing different activities with him. And I got an awareness that he's very much involved with what we're doing here at home. And we, I don't know about him, but we get so caught up in the physical realm of things that you tend to think, where, where is the Lord in all this? And in a practical sense, even when I think about what we went through yesterday, he's very much involved with what's going on and he wants to, us to really understand and work with him on those those areas of our life that we think he's not there but he really is i have seen um an aqua like an, a beautiful aqua marine color then almost a teal. I've been seeing that for a while as well now though. <clears throat> but it's almost like a this aquamarine that's just got sort of a almost sparkle to it. And a depth of purity. And I was sort of looking at this, and then I sensed it's actually part of the makeup and particle type of structure of the doxa, the glory cloud of God. Wow, thank you for sharing, Dimitri. As we've been experiencing the different colors and the light, just allow that to become pixelated in your visualizing it in your mind's eye. 
And let's just see where how this spirit takes us possibly into the four dimensions of becoming that absolute oneness in particle states. Wow, wow, wow. Jimmy, just this second, before you open your mouth, say that the scripture drop in my spirit, hope does not disappoint because the love of God is pouring in our heart. And I, I, I wanted to say that, I hold back a little bit and you say that. So there's no no to love. So we can hope. It is like confirmation of what you're saying. So whatever we want to hope, we want to wish, you know, and the kingdom right now, I guess they won't be disappointed because the Lord will, I guess, showing it, seeing it, manifested that scripture exactly match, something like that. I was just seeing, <clears throat> I began seeing these, I began to seeing, I began seeing us all in this whirlwind. Um, and the whirlwind, <clears throat> the whirlwind was going in the, in the uh, clockwise um, flow. And as we were in this whirlwind, there was these flashes of light coming out of us. And I saw these different flashes of light. And I saw, um, you know, I saw the blue lights and the white lights. I saw the turquoisey lights. I saw the red light, the lights that the colors that have been mentioned. I just saw these, the, the dark colors. I saw, um, you know, different colors just flashing out of us as we were, as we were twirling around in a clockwise direction in, in this whirlwind. And I was, as I was looking at it, I was like, I was seeing this is who we are manifesting as spirit beings. Yes, I can see it's like we're dancing and as we dance, it's, it's unending waves of all, all color spectrums are flowing out of us. And, and this is funny, but I also saw like, so as we were swirling around in this clockwise direction and these, these, these lights are, are flashing out of us, then I saw us like pop into, into pure white light together. And I, <laughs> I had a sense that when we did that, we were just like landing something in, in unity. <laughs> Like we did earlier when we landed and agreed with the release of being uh, the angel understanding and engaging angels becoming part of the ecclesia and the children and the children's children. Like we did that. I believe in sense we released unending waves of love, forgiveness, and mercy and compassion. <clears throat> to all our family members and generation lines. Mm. That's beautiful. I really resonate. I sense the, uh, when you said that, Laurel, it is kind of like it's settled in my spirit. Like I, I just had a sense of like, how do you describe it? Like it, it just landed, landed in my being like, yeah. Mm. Mm. 
And I also got this sense of like, <clears throat> when Michelle had mentioned about possibilities, I, I got this sense of like, the realization of, we cannot be defeated because there's endless possibilities. <laughs> The clockwise motion of the whirlwind, as you were speaking earlier about that, I got the distinct download that the reason it's in a clockwise motion is nothing is being removed or undone, but that which is from the Father is being deposited in us and it's yes. in the momentum of time that he's moving it into us. Mm. And the brilliant white light is all the different colors coming together. It's all of us becoming one. I liked what you said there, Dimitri, and I agree about the clockwise, going clockwise and being actually tethered to, and I think that, that one of the things I was getting was that tethered to this understanding or this realize, tethered to realize that I cannot be defeated. We cannot be defeated because there's endless possibilities. And so I was with the Lord, I was like engaging and it was like, well, sometimes there's a sense of like discouragement or a sense of feeling defeated because of the tools we've had that we've used for a victory or a res heavenly result, not producing the heavenly result. And so it was like, open up, open up and receive the reality that, you know, you don't need to hold on to the limited tools you've had because there's limitless possibilities, there's limitless ways. So open up, open up, you know, to receive the, gr the more. And the reality that there's, there's no real place for defeat. I'm glad you said that because in all the things that happen in the natural world, you start feeling a sense of defeat uh, when people start pointing out the physical realities. And you know there's a possibility that it doesn't have to be that way, but it, it it gets to be a little tiresome because you think I did this, I did that. I used to do this. I used to do that and it worked. Well, now it's not working anymore. So I think that that really rings a bell with me because that's how I was feeling the last couple of days. That's, that's amazing because the whole time I've also been sensing that as we understand, we are in the rest of Father, we are in that completed place. And that which is being deposited in us right now is just showing us that in that place of being in him, being one in unity with each other, being one in unity with him, we are more than conquerors. I saw these sheets of music being given to us while we're in this whirlwind and uh, it's a, a sheets of sounds of frequency of music of song.
Michelle, I, when you were speaking about the sheets of songs, I was just getting earlier, and I was getting this earlier today as well, is that as we worship in spirit and in truth from Zion, in our being one and flowing in the total choreography of the spirit, we will release a new frequency and a new sound and a new song into the dimensions of the earth, wherever we are. And I just sense that that is going to release a glory as we come into that choreography of the spirit where we just flow as one. Where you don't need a worship leader in front in a church anymore, you just absolutely flow with what the spirit leads. You don't need somebody guiding and leading you all along the way of how to sing, how to worship, how to whatever, but it's just that oneness of being. Yeah, what came to me was everything is frequency of sound and light. Sound and light energy. Mm. Finest, smallest particles, quarks, which are the pure energy mm. of creation. Yeah. I'm also seeing as we're in this state of being and releasing that, it releases a mandate for the angels to actually do what they have been waiting for us to release so mm -hmm. that they can do what they need to do on our behalf and for us individually as well as corporately as well as, as mankind. Almost like I was getting angels of creative, limitless possibilities. Came to me, I saw the particle state of light being broken down into its smallest particle, which is the quark. And I saw it being actually plugged into like an electrical electricity grid. And the entire planet from one quark being lit up. Every country, every nation, every city, every town was lit up from this one quark. Word came to me, there's enough power in and energy in one particle of a quark to light up the planet for more than a million years. Mm. Is that expression, Dimitri, um, the, the, an, an, the expression of a nanoparticle of light? Of uncreated light, of father? Uh, the quark being the smallest particle of the 99 particles is the uncreated light. It's the actual creative light energy. It's the pure energy of the fa our father. 
which we are as spirit beings. I was just thinking of something now, which I saw some time ago. If you take the voltage of every cell in the human body, it's been just over one volt, and you add it all up together, we have a trillion plus volts of electrical energy just in our being, in our bodies, in our physical being. I heard us start singing up that singing up. I heard us start singing the songs that of the on the sheets that we were given, and it was just like such harmony and melody and and such a flow of the unity of the songs that we were singing, and and I and I knew that and that we knew the words and we understood them all. We already knew the future. We already knew, you know, we already knew the the limitless possibilities and and the and the tools of that we already knew that and we were singing that and the angels it was also their song as well so they knew the song as well of the of this moment in time and of us being uh, an expression of an un, undefeatable the angels knew these uh frequencies and sounds of the song and are, are, there's such a unity there between us and the angels like we're singing it and they're singing it together and there's such a harmony and there's such a love the angels are so um so committed to us to to be the help to us you know uh, to establish this new song this new frequency this new and and it's a revelation of of our true being in the in these light being forms that we actually are and how and how to um release those light the lights and the sounds and the frequency to produce the heavenly results going forward And I also had a sense about the, the freedom today to literally recognize that we let go, recognize and let go if we haven't, of, of the old tools, not that they aren't wrong, right? But, um, but there's, there's much more. And we're moving into the new.